guys, how's it going? This is Pierre Lu, and you're back here with another edition of The Holding Monster. And today, I'm here with Bridge Japan Canada with Bridge's newest seat, the Zero. So Zero is spelled X-E-R-O, and this is Bridge's newest seat, but newest iteration of the racing performance line. So what happens, you know, what happens with the Zero is there's two variations. You have the CS here, and the RS. And of course, right away, you can tell it's a very hardcore seat, uh, very much a track-orientated seat but they do have like a street version and this one probably more like a track version, but it's kind of up to you where you want to put it. So basically uh, this seat was released in 2018. Uh, it debuted on October 23rd. And when it got released, you know, everybody saw the new improvements of the bridge seat. You know, the quality is totally different. They've gone down, they made designs. And uh, you know, I didn't know what bridge seat could like change so much, but to be honest, after viewing the seat, uh, it's massive. Like the seat, it feels, Amazing the all the finishes and everything really really good and hopefully we'll give you close-ups of that and uh, On October 27th uh, 2018 uh, the seat debuted in the 86 Gazoo BRZ race and one of the drivers was uh, Max Arito and he spec that seat out tried it out for the first time and uh, The seat got pole position. So definitely it is a very track oriented seat and basically the zero uh, What they really wanted to focus on for this seat was to get all the minute details to really get a seat that has amazing hold, a very much improved quality, but also they want to remove all the pressure points, uh, reduce the fatigue for the driver as much as possible because this seat is really an endurance seat. So the longer a driver can sit in a seat and not be bothered by the comfort or the holding power of the seat, they can definitely concentrate more of their focus to attacking the corners and improve lapping times. So that was the main focus for the Zero and when it came out. So now that you have the basics of what the Zero is, we're gonna start talking about the variations. Uh, this one has a CS. Mainly you don't have as big of a headrest and the RS has a bigger headrest, but I'm gonna talk to you guys first about the color and the uh, fabrics for it. So it comes in eight variations between the two seats. Uh, the first one is the color, you get black. So this is all black fabric. Second one is gradation, Brid's famous uh, gradation logo here. And of course it's available in the FRP back, which is the sparkle back. And both of the ones I have here are sparkle back. So like this or they're also available in a carbon back. So that means black gradation, uh, FRP, or carbon for both, and same with this seat. So that leaves with eight different variations of uh, whatever your needs are, okay? So now we're gonna put the seats together and I'm just gonna give you guys a comparison between the two seats. All right, so now we have the seats back to back. On this side, I have the Zero RS, and on this side, the CS. So the first thing, and the most distinct thing between the RS and the CS, and why the RS has uh, an increased price point, is because of this uh, head restraint system. So the head restraint system here, is very large, sticks out by quite a lot, and this is for your full helmet protection. So if you have your seat without your helmet, you know, you're against the back of the seat, you're not gonna be able to look out left and right, but with the added uh, depth of your helmet, uh, this is actually a pretty good protection system and you can get quite a bit left and right uh, viewability after your head's kind of pushed forward with your helmet. And uh, this also like in a, in a case of a side impact, you get a hard hit on the side or your car spins on somebody hits you, then this will stop your helmet from, you know, moving left and right. Your hands stops you from front to back, but this will help you left to right. And uh, of course on here, you know, it's a smaller section on there. Uh, also, some people think that's the only difference between the zero. There's actually a lot of different holding differences here. So I don't know if you guys can see from the side, but right around here, this height and this height is quite different on the RS. A lot higher height here, that's increased uh, thigh raise for the thigh protection. So with this being higher, you get a little bit more holding power. And the other thing is the sunken in. So between the seatbelt hole, you'll see that this guy on the RS is quite a lot thicker than here. This is quite a bit thinner. So overall, the whole shape of the bucket on the RS is out by quite a bit. Uh, other than that, the width of the seats are exactly the same. The bottom, the low max system and the sitting width is exactly the same. So you'll fit the same in both seats. The only improvements is mainly the holding power and the head restraint. All right, so now we're gonna dive into a couple of details with the seats. So on the RS here and the CS, you see they both say Brid and Lomax, so the Lomax system I already explained. And of course that's stitched in and the Lomax is in red lettering. Um, the other difference is you see this guy, it's got uh, like this uh, medium size head restraint. This one got the max large size head restraint. And also it has uh, this uh, removable uh, headrest section so it can be removed cleaned, or replaced if you need to get it thicker or smaller and also uh, the fabric up here is your standard brid fabric you know your uh, flame res re resistant fabric uh, another big change uh, on this seat that i haven't seen in previous brid seats is this uh, seat belt hole 
kind of has this carbon texture on it, which is really nice, really emphasizes it's a really sport tracking orientated seat. Uh, this size is kind of like similar to the Zeta Plus, and that's gonna aid you in having your hands device, better comfortability. Uh, the, new, the main differences down here are that the fabric's quite different. So here you'll notice that uh, on the Zeta, we have like a buckskin leather holding pad. Brid has incorporated this extra holding pad in the shoulder as well. This has like a carbon texture fabric. And with that, that gives you a little bit more holding power on your shoulders and a little bit more uh, resistant wear because your shoulders will be contacting the seat uh, pretty much full time during the track race. And uh, we're gonna take our focus uh, further down to the seat. All right, so now we're gonna move into the lower details of the seat. Uh, the main thing that pops right away is this quilted stitching on the side. This feels really nice. Like when they quilt it, it kind of adds these little pockets here. And this pocket kind of gives it like a really plush support. It feels really luxurious. That's something I've never seen on a bridge seat before. And along with this carbon thing. But another thing is this uh, kind of simulated leather edging here. Of course, anybody that has a low vehicle with uh, a racing performance bucket seat, you know getting in and out of your seat's gonna be kind of an issue sometimes with uh, wear on the edges. So I think this will help you uh, reduce the wear that the seat goes through. And of course we have our uh, famous bridge cushions. This one here I have is the gradation. On the RS I have the standard black color, but they're the same uh, material for the depth of the cushion. So this one is actually quite thin. Uh, it's thinner than some of the ones I've seen before for the back, but I think it's because they're relying on here to hold you in. And down here, we also have a very thin cushion as well. And down here, we have our trademark uh, split cushion from Brid. So the split cushion, uh, I always like because it means you can move your left and right foot independently. So when you're working the clutch or you're doing left foot braking, then you can move this. And when you're doing gas, uh, it allows you to have independent control of each leg, uh, especially when you're in a corner or on a time attack, then it helps you a ton. So really nice new features from the Zero uh, on the bottom half of the seat, especially where the driver is. And another thing is also on the side here, they also have this carbon pattern for the seatbelt pad, uh, sorry, for the harness pass-through. And also the distance here is quite a little bit larger than the previous grid seats. I think it's because this is for an endurance racing uh, that is such a deep pocket of holding power here that the person using this could have a very differing waist size so with that, you can have your lap belts up higher or lower, and that'll probably increase the comfort and holding of the seat and probably improve the safety as well. So lastly, we're gonna go into the back of the seats. And right away, the back seats, they look totally like weapons. This is something like I've never seen before. It's got like a hard back, but it's just how they mold it. It looks incredible. And uh, one thing that's different is in the back here, instead of having your stitching logo, here, of course, it's a sticker that they put. And here, both of mine are the FRP back, so it has a sparkle back, which Brid is well known for. And like I said in previous uh, Brid videos, if you've been watching, this is like a silver spray paint. It looks kind of like they have clear resin, and it's kind of like someone took a whole bunch of sparkles, put it, like dipped it with the resin, and it's like swirling around, and then it hardened. That's what it looks like. So that's a good way to tell if your seat's authentic or not, is this isn't silver spray paint, it's actually silver sparkle. And of course, on the back, this uh, this new carbon pattern for the grommets looks really good. And here you can see the differences between the seats. This is RS because of the larger headrest. It's uh, 20 millimeters taller than the CS seat. And another thing that they have here is this wrapping. So there's rubber wrapping between it. It looks really good. It looks kind of industrial, kind of like, um, you know, ex machina kind of. It looks really futuristic, makes the seat look really distinct and of course we have uh, our bridge stickers here which is on every bridge seat and um right now if you buy a zero i i know i don't have to point it out but if you're buying a zero right now uh chances are not a counterfeit because it's just been released to market but uh make sure you guys can use the video to do references in the future if uh, they start making replicas of this seat and uh, i think that's all the details for the back Most important part of a seat, uh, besides all the technology that's built into it, is fitment. So we gotta discuss fitment. Uh, I'll check the measurements, and this seat is probably most comparable, probably to a Zeta or a Vios, just a regular one. Uh, the width of the seat actually can fit probably an S2000 or a Miata. It's quite narrow up front, so it's actually smaller in width than a Zeta, and that's what you're looking at for fitment of seat. So the seat is quite short and quite narrow, so it's gonna be fitting a lot of platforms. I don't think there's any car it doesn't really fit in. Uh, I think that was the purpose of the seat, to have it allowed for anybody that was converting any car into a full racing car, that this seat would fit. And uh, as far as we're concerned with fit for the driver, I've had a sit in the seats 
Um, it's not mounted on a bracket, so I can't send it for you guys. But I'm a 34 inch waist size. It's fitting uh, a little bit on the tight side. So I would say the fitment is probably what is a bridge standard fitment. So I'd be probably up to a 32 inch waist size. And once you go over 32, I think you might have to go to a different seat. Uh, Brid does offer larger seats uh, in the racing series. But that's probably what you would be getting at uh, for the width. I think probably 32 inch waist size would probably be the max. 33 is getting a little bit uncomfortable. But one thing is even though the dimensions inside are a little bit smaller than the Zeta, I noticed that with this plushness and uh, because the seat goes in like quite a bit deeper that the comfort uh, is still there more than a smaller racing seat that doesn't fit well. All right, so that concludes our dive in for the Brid Zero seat. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, if you're looking for a racing seat for a time attack car, for a track build, definitely the Brid Zero RS or CS, definitely the go-to seat. You know, after going over the features, you know, we've been in the market of racing seats for a long time. Uh, this seat definitely pushed the envelope of comfortability, uh, details and research to get the best driver oriented racing seat possible. So I would say that this would be my first choice if you're trying to get that type of seat. And uh, Brit has definitely pushed the envelope with the zero. So if you guys like the video, you know, comment below, hit subscribe, I'll bring more Brit products to you guys. And uh, make sure that when you're purchasing your Brit seats, you're looking for your authorized re reseller. Because uh, those guys, you know, you're putting your hard-earned money towards a good product. You use that money for safety, research, they're making better innovations. Those are the people you want to be supporting in our industry. So make sure that your seats are authentic and you're getting them from authorized reseller to guarantee their authenticity. Okay? Thanks, guys.